Okay. And now I have something truly special for everyone. I present to you Service in Furnace, the director of a new short film recently submitted to the Antinatalist Film Festival, Effluent Seals, an anti-nature documentary of sorts. And I think truly an excellent addition to this first year of the Antinatalist Film Festival. So Service in Furnace, welcome. Welcome to the last Antinatalist Film Festival info session for the year. It's an honor to have you here with us today. Uh, thank you so much for doing this tonight. Yeah, I'm absolutely pleased to be here. It's a great alleviation to my deprivation. I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so just the first question, uh, who is Service and Furnace? Tell, tell me if you can tell us a little bit about yourself. Service and Furnace is an individual who is deeply affected by the suffering of the world and does what they can in whatever small way their limited power allows to help out with that problem. Um, he is an anti-species advocate and Ephelis, who figures that since we are locked up in this prison of sentience, the best thing we may do is help the other inmates. I wrote that beforehand. And I love it. Amazing. <laughs> can I ask, where, where, does that, where does the name Service and Furnace come from? Um, uh, so I was going to be service giganticus, which is, um, obviously the Zapfi last Messiah he uses that as an analogy for the human condition. Um, the heaviness of the certain ice age gears, deers, antlers, holding them down, um, human consciousness holding us down. Uh, but I looked up service giganticus on YouTube and not very long ago, I don't know exactly how distant in the past, but I think only a few months prior to me going to register that name, uh, somebody had already made one. Um, and they might, they might be antinatalist advocates. Um, their genre of presenting, their advocacy is death metal. Okay. So I, 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 I've so it's never possible. been, it's possible. I, the vocals to me personally are unintelligible, but it's possible they could be spreading the good word. So service in no. furnace was um, more or less just kind of a, I think in furnace means grave right. in Latin. So it's just kind of, kind of two cool words put together, I guess. Yeah, no, and totally. It, it and sounds it, great. It, yeah. And it just calls to um, sort of just be other animal aspect of this philosophy, which I try to place at not maybe not the forefront, at least shoulder to shoulder with the human um, problems of procreation. I've noticed that you put it right at the at the helm, which is one of the reasons I really I really like your work so much. Um, Service, why are you an antinatalist? And in your case, I have reason to suspect uh, why are you also <laughs> why are you also an ethicist? And can you tell me a little bit about how you first came to find out about those ideas? Um, sure. So I guess I've always had what could be called an anti procreative inclination. Um, in high school or shortly the after high school, I might have come across vehement. Um, I never got into them in any significant way, but I kind of thought, hey, humans are really doing a lot of terrible things to the other species on this planet. Uh, yeah. Perhaps it would be better if they went away. Um, so I did sort of hold that as you know, a nature worshiper so to speak, for quite a while. But uh, it was after I really got into the vegan philosophy, um, not just the diet, but the philosophy behind that particular stance um, that I kind of started to realize that the animals are really suffering as well. Right. And um, it led, that led down the path to sort of wild animal suffering and understanding that. And, which led to you know, the, the ping pong, ping pong ball, hitting back and forth across the table, the, the pin ball, hitting the different bumpers and hitting all of these different uh, truths, I would say, which did lead to, um, I might have seen The Wounds of Existence by Amendum was the first real ethylist okay. um, introduction. And I still use that as the sort of 101. That's a great tai chi. A great Tai Chi video. video, right, right. That's an excellent one. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I, I almost came 
to Ethelism before the anti-natalism and anti-natalism like sort of seemed uh, just if we consider anti-natalism as a anthropocentric position, it just seemed lacking. Right. So that if you could parse anything from that word salad, uh, oh, I absolutely it sort of went. It sort of went vehement, though I didn't really know vehement. It was just a why do we need more people? That's not really helpful to the environment kind of deal to the veganism. Pretty much straight to the Ephelis position. Amazing. Well, yeah, it's quite a journey. Well, a lot of people start with, you know, with vehement. It's it, you know, for 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 all my disagreements with vehement's conclusion in the end, I think Les Knight has done an incredible job of just getting that anti-procreative message out right. there in I'm ways that nobody else was able to for a long mm -hmm. time. A while back too. Didn't, was it in the nineties he started that? I, I, if I'm not mistaken, I should know this by now, but I think he originally started in the seventies. But it was in the Good. 90s wow. that they really, they really kind of hit their stride. Yeah, they got, they got a little momentum. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, consequentially, it's, it's less humans are coming into the world to suffer and to cause suffering. So. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, service, you've you've previously described uh, your movie *Effluent Seals* as a portrait of the senseless brutality and ultimate futility of nature, focusing on the troubled lives of one particular species of marine mammals, the northern elephant seal. And you've also said uh, of, of your film *Seaside Views*, radical pessimist philosophy, <laughs> and violent, sexually charged uh, three-ton marine mammals. Splash on in, which I just I love. <laughs> I just love both of those write-ups. <laughs> yeah, um, so both both great descriptions of the film. I think um, I Thank think you. you've done an excellent job of illustrating that that gladiatorial carnage that that nature mindlessly propels these animals to engage in, mm -hmm. all to produce the next generation conquest through violence and rape for no real purpose. Um, what can you tell me about the making of Effluent Seals and how did the idea for this film first come about? Um, right. So uh, I had initially planned to just go to this beach, uh, San Simeon in California, where quite famously um, the effluent seals come to do their thing, do their mating and whatnot. Um, the plan for that trip was perhaps even before I understood and accepted wild animal suffering as a extremely salient uh, moral issue. Um, so as gross as it sounds, my partner, I kind of wanted to go there specifically to see them, or to get out in battle. Um, obviously between the planning of the trip and the journey to that particular destination, I came to understand the old uh, crap conclusion, consumption, reproduction, addiction, parasitism, um, so I was definitely going into it with a different set of eyes than when I had initially planned to see uh, the spectacle of nature. Um, so that definitely colored my filming. I was always planning on filming it just, just as a keepsake, as a memento. Um, but it, it, it came to me perhaps during the filming or shortly thereafter to kind of use this as a teaching tool more or less to just kind of show the people who aren't so understanding of the as you said gladiatorial nature of dna life to maybe get them to uh, think a little bit more about what they're so keenly promoting absolutely i you know i i have to say that um, not that your movie reminds me of these films, but there's a there, there's a certain aspect of what you're talking about that remind me of my own. Um, you know, like I was I was obsessed with movies like Mondo Khan and Cannibal Holocaust as a kid right. because it was yeah. it was the only they were the only pieces of media that were putting the truth in your face. And it was like, it kind of developed like an obsession with them because I'm like, this is trying to tell me something. Like there's right. something wrong with all this, you know? <laughs> and and it, and it starts out, you know, as, as sort of what you're describing was that sort of like, I just want to see it, you know? Like it's yeah. almost like a, a leering kind of uh, expo Leer exploitation, thing, you know? Mm -hmm. but, right. then it, but then it, on the other side of that is really understanding 
the the mechanism and the suffering and yeah so i think you've created that kind of peace for people which is really exciting and even the slickly produced nature documentaries are really just slickly produced snuff films absolutely they, absolutely. they add they their yeah they add their uplifting music and their narrative editing but it's just organisms stealing other organisms energy at the end of the day absolutely and it, it, it's incredible honestly that more people don't come away from those mm -hmm. documentaries and those those television programs without you know <laughs> a more ethicalistic uh, understanding but you know, I can't know. say I, I didn't for many years. Nor did so I, no. Just You just need the right symbols shoved in your face, it seems. Exactly. With the yeah. right into it. It's just all, you know, we're just the robots who uh, take in the software. Yeah. No, but it would be interesting to distill exactly what it is about some pieces of media like this mm -hmm. that get that get people there and, and what, you know, what, why some of these other nature documentaries that are just as brutal don't get people to that place so yeah it's it, it's it's a it's a fascinating point um is this your first film uh no no i've been making uh short <laughs> comedy films for oh, wow several years now several years yeah so the so the as i suspected the footage is all your own i mean is, is any part of it found footage whatsoever or it's, it's all just uh, footage you filmed yeah. no it is it is all footage i filmed over the course of a long weekend yeah three days wow i mean i have to suspect you were in like some amount of danger filming this i mean those are those are incredibly uh, large animals you know out in the wild yeah they really just stick to their own um designs and uh it's a yeah. very uh touristic setup um it's, it's a way to bring people in they have built they have uh boardwalks a significant height above them but it is it is really quite shocking just to see just these little leviathans and yeah. what they can do. Um, from what I understand, you also wrote the music for Effluent Seals. Um, the title of the of the music used in the piece is Effluent, uh, no, sorry, Elephant Seal Beach. Uh, and I very much enjoyed it. I think it gives the whole oh, thank piece. Thank Yeah, it kind of gives the whole piece like a silent film kind of kind of feel to it. It's 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 that type of score, sure, I feel sure. like. And the title sure. cards, I think, also kind of help oh, that right, feeling right. along um is is do you write a lot of music is this something that you do regularly yeah that is that has been my main creative outlet since you know i was 15. Um, oh, amazing for all of its horror effluent seals is a beautiful well-shot piece fascinating subject matter there's really something very poignant i thought about how like there's certain shots where the seals are almost indistinguishable from the rocks until you sort of notice this writhing of the of these strange bodies and i almost thought that was a uh, another nice sort of me metaphoric way of illustrating you know the absurdity of their struggle um, there's almost a strange kind of humor also you're, you're you kind of harness in the piece um, that that's hard to put my finger on exactly, but it, it is there uh, for me anyway. Um, I mean, what do you hope people will most take away from watching your film? Um, what 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 do you most hope that people come away with it, um, you know, understanding better? Uh, that is an interesting and difficult question. I guess just as the neon sign, <laughs> nature, not particularly good. Okay, right? yeah, yeah. But, um, not as good as it's sold to you um but i guess another aspect would just to be to see these animals as the individuals that they are they are not just um nodes in the environmental map they're people for, all, for all intents and purposes they have feelings and emotions and uh for me, the most harrowing shot that I, I honestly had to look away from as I rewatched it and uh, fine tuned it after a while is the shot somewhat in the middle of the uh, short film in which the male is just blatantly dominating a female. Yeah, absolutely. He body slams her twice and he's screaming. Through my eyes, I can see just the fear and discomfort to put it lightly in her eyes and then i see the baby right behind them also witnessing this and shuffling away as inelegantly as they do on the sand and uh i guess 
just since this is particularly highlighting their breeding cycle, um, I guess if people take away the fact that this is just ongoing, this isn't just a snapshot in time, there have been millions and millions and trillions of snapshots like this. And just the, the next generation will carry this on. And that little baby seal today, who's afraid from what I could tell, was afraid of that total behemoth just forcing his will onto the mother seal, um, will one day either be that mother seal or that behemoth. So I guess just that generational agony, perhaps, just the, just passing down the, the baton of suffering might be a, a little bit of a subtext that I only noticed in the editing room, but I'd like that to be recognized if possible. Uh, no, absolutely. I, 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 I certainly recognize it. I think that is a, a incredibly stunning and it's just a horrific image that shot um but i think you're right i think the, the film captures the personhood of these mm -hmm. animals so well the individuals and um i mean even just the little details of the the, the little baby suckling on its mother but it's little yeah. its little flaps are flapping and it, you can mm -hmm. it, it, but but there's a there's a real you make the point so well in it, I think, of both the personhood of these individuals, but also the the sameness and the repetition and the the waste. You just make the waste uh, very apparent, waste. you know, that right. all of these precious individuals and these precious experiences and the are are just gonna get recycled over and over and over again. Um cool. in this right. in this horror show. So yeah, no, absolutely. That being said, the hor the horror show that it is, I can't say that I wasn't ecstatic just to see the cute little baby seals of course the, before before i would say before they're thrown into the uh the gauntlet they're, they're still they're still not they're not uh sitting on a doggy bed or anything um, they still gotta it's gonna um just crawl around and yell to get what they want done but, oh yeah uh, the is, babies are so cute they're so cute they're so they, they, cute I think I think the audio comes through when they 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 scream. <laughs> That's the only yeah. thing I could the only way I could describe it. They just scream. And um, the first day we were there it was evening, and uh, we were on one side of the beach, and we just heard that that yelp. And it was like, geez, some kid is really getting out of control, or some human child is really having a ball. But the next day we realized, oh, those are the the seal children. That was sort of one of those moments in the film where it was like, it, it's almost a little bit funny, you know, just because that sound yeah. that comes out of him, you don't expect, but it's also, it does sound like a scream. I mean, it's, it's, it's one of those, <laughs> uh, those surreal moments, you know, where it's, it, it, you're not quite sure how you're supposed yeah. to feel. And this but, yeah. is, you know, you can, you can take some levity from that. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Just the absurdity, but then you can also just flip that and recognize is the absurdity, not one of the reasons that this game should, kind of wind down a little bit it's absolutely just so, so pointless yeah no absolutely excellent point um what are the future plans for your youtube channel do you think you'll be making more videos for it more movies um yeah i definitely have the uh the document uh going where i jot down any particular uh inspirations that come to mind um i have shot the follow-up video amazing um, it very different than it, it is actually much less focused on the suffering of other animals it's uh more of a human-centric one but you know you gotta you gotta cover all the bases absolutely um, absolutely but yeah That's and uh, I'm, I'm just gonna try to keep a relatively steady output of decently quality videos for Wonderful. the, yeah, That's for the great time news. being and into the future I love hearing that. That's great. Um, you and I have discussed a little bit about this in email, but I mean, I really think you should, if you, if it's something you're at all interested in, I think you should pursue uh, sending this to other film festivals. I think it's a great little piece. It's a great length. Um, you know, length is very important to people who program festivals. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I just think it's, it's very worth pursuing. Um, you know, have you, is the Antinatalist Film Festival the first film festival you've ever submitted to? 
It is. It, it, it Amazing. is. Um, yeah. So it's a well, great thank you. Thank you for you yeah. and Middleism International for uh, setting up the initiative. The pleasure is all mine. Thank you so much for submitting to it. Service, you were also one of our contestants this year for the 7th Annual Why Are You an Antinatalist Contest 2021 edition with your entry, The Last uh, Last Glacial Maximus, that I thought was a really phenomenal uh, written entry. Um, can you tell everyone a little bit about this piece? And before you do, um, I did want to also say how much I loved that last line. Uh, in, in the piece, I don't, I don't want to give you know too much away, but that last line is, "I am an F-less because we are all frozen under ice," and I've, I've just spent a lot of time thinking about the meaning of that. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts on, on on this piece that you submitted. I'm sure. I honestly haven't read that in a while, but um, reaching back into the memory hole. Uh, yeah, I I didn't really have time to put together a video um this year so I definitely wanted to contribute something and I actually do consider myself sort of a writer above everything else even with the I'm not really a musician so much as a songwriter um so it is where I'm probably most comfortable expressing myself um yeah so uh the idea was just sort of to take that analogy that I mentioned might have been off off the record just mentioned earlier about just as Apfi's service giganticus um, and just sort of expand it with my own particular feelings and uh, just to put out there that this is nothing new. This has been going on for 500 and some odd million years. Um, and just that uh, it's just so much wasted suffering as, as you once again, eloquently put it earlier. And uh, the trapped under ice particular line was on the surface just to keep in the theme of the uh, Ice Age, uh, Pleistocene, Pleistocene fauna, but uh, at a deeper level was just sort of to say that as individuals, we really are just frozen and powerless. I, d I do believe in... Uh, you know, the collectivist uh, mentality of enough individuals could come together to make significant change. But if we are just looking at ourselves alone in a mirror, is that mirror not just the ice that freezes us? We, we can't do anything about all of these terrible events that transpire on a second by second basis. So beautifully said, yeah, a little bit pessimistic, I, I think. I think that's allowed. I think that's allowed here. <laughs> I, think a, I think this is a pessimist uh, safe safe space. Yes, um, indeed. <laughs> no, it's it's um. I hadn't written a, a proper question about this, but it, it, I mean, it's interesting to hear Zap being um, worked with as an author and contemplated under sort of an ethelist, um framework. I guess. Um, I mean, do you do you? think of any of Zapp's work as particularly ethelistic? Or do you have any sort of thoughts about how, how, how one could connect Zapp to, to ethelism? I have to admit that I've only read The Last Messiah. Me too, um, yeah. Is it, that's yeah. the only work available in English currently, is it not? I think so, I, as far as I know, yeah. I, I have to admit I'm no expert on Zapp. Uh, yeah, so the question was the, uh, an ethelist reading of Zapp. Um, I, I really do think just the way he outlines just more or less the uh, all you can really do is, you know, sublimate or distract. It, it, it kind of just speaks to that ultimate futility. We're not talking about a consent argument here. We're talking that every single organism with a brain is just living a futile existence. They can only gain so much before it's all lost. So once again, I haven't read that essay in, in uh, several months, but if that made any sense. Oh no, all, all excellent thoughts. No, I was just very curious about that. So 
Oh, as there is still a little bit of time left to submit work to the Antinatalist Film Festival service, do you encourage your fellow antinatalist video and filmmakers to submit their work to the Antinatalist Film Festival before their time is up for the year? I would enthusiastically, with as much enthusiasm as I can possibly muster, encourage others to do so. Because um, this is uh, a quote that I think has been used and spoken by many throughout history. I actually saw it on somebody's Animal Liberation Front t-shirt, but it just says, if not you, then who? If not now, then when? So if you do believe strongly in this ethic, in this philosophy, make your voice heard. A hundred percent. Everybody listen to this man right here. Uh, well, that's, that's wonderful. Thank you so much, Service. Um, service, where can people find you? How can people continue to support your work? Um, sure. Right now, I pretty much just have a, a YouTube channel, which is uh, Service in Furnace. Um, I also have a WordPress that I'm pretty much just going to use to put the scripts for videos um so that's linked on my youtube channel in the, in the little uh banner so service and furnace that should get you there if you want to listen to some rad death metal service gigantic is but, but my okay. stuff is service and furnace wonderful and then you also have a twitter do you want that uh oh sure yeah, you there yeah. As well? i'm just I'm, I'm just kind of new to diving into it with uh my name out there so i forget <laughs> twitter yeah sure twitter Oh, no um, worries. No worries at all. No, I, think that's it's, awesome. I think it's at Service and Furnace. Okay, excellent. Well, I will put all of those links below. Everyone, please Ooh. go make sure to check out Service's blog on WordPress, uh, Service Giganticus. Subscribe to him on YouTube. Please follow him on Twitter. And really, just thank you once again for being my guest today, for submitting your work to the Antinatalist Film Festival. I think you're incredibly talented. I really, really, really do uh, love Effluent Seals. And um, yeah, just I, I can't wait for December to uh to to get a chance to show it within the festival. Be good.